You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my god. You've got all your Charger gear on because I'm feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> well, rise and shine, folks. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Will Dog, sitting with my caffeinated buddy, Kev Huggin' Duggan. Good morning, family. Mm, let's not forget Kyle, the coach, Duggan. Yeah, I got my coffee. I honestly love morning podcasts. This is way more fun. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I, I do make the craziest, dumbest comments when I'm beyond tired. So I I, you kind of need to do both. If you guys haven't seen the last episode, <laughs> you will see a very tired Kevin. I was, I literally, I, ju- <laughs> I just got, so I think this might be the move. I just got done driving from Orlando, Florida to somewhere in Georgia. Yeah. 13 hours of driving, got my kids in bed. The lady at the front desk let me have the gym to set up my shit in. Which was very nice. And that was really nice, but like the delirious level I was at apparently works. It works. Hey, so <laughs> we talked about your vasectomy. Sense. We talked about your vasectomy for 10 minutes. And then 30 minutes and later, you're like, <laughs> did we just talk we about just, that? <laughs> yeah, we might have to cut that out, but I guess we might have to cut this out too. <laughs> right. No, leave it in. No, it's all in, baby. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. We're all in. Because you're Start a super dad. All in. Well, you missed it. Cut it out. <laughs> I'm on fire. Cut it out. Yeah. All right. Whole house. Everyone Let's go. that. Um, Shut it up. All right, folks, lots to talk about this episode. They're in a bye week. You wouldn't think there would be breaking news, but Manischewitz, oh, there it is broke. Some breaking news. We will talk all about it. Uh, and we've got ourselves a Craig experience lined up as well. Uh, but let's start at the top here. First of all, we're recording this on Friday, Friday morning, which Early. means yesterday was the debut of the newest episode of All In, which was... One. I think really, <laughs> it was so good. It was just so much fun to watch. Uh, it is yeah. all about one of the best players, if not, I mean, he, he's breaking records. He's right got now. it. He's chasing a tight end right now, but That's he's right. the wide receiver, the best wide receiver we've had. But in he, terms made, of like, he made a comment. He made a comment towards Gates. He's like, I need like three more years and I'm going to get you. I don't think. He's oh, done well, it. you can have as many years as you want. You keep, keep playing like this. Years, Tom. <laughs> Please. Yes. It was all about Keenan Allen and. Uh, a look into his career, being a part of the Chargers, some of the best plays that he's made, how amazing he played in that game against the Vikings, just shattering records. And uh, I love my favorite part in that was when they um, they showed him the Justin Jefferson flip in the week mm, leading up. Yeah, and they coach said that he's it. usually loud, having fun. Like he, the coach was like, he locked in. Oh yeah, like I love that. I love. I I don't know. I love. That was really good. Ugh. Because you you wonder about that as fans. Like as fans, we throw that gif around, going like, "You think Keenan Allen's going to remember this?" You know, oh yeah, right, right. Remember this. Not only did he remember, proof did something about it exactly, as well, which yeah. was awesome. Made made an effort to be just the baddest ass on that field, and <laughs> yeah. did not disappoint. Um, yeah, definitely go check it out if you haven't seen it, folks. We're on episode three of this season of All In, and they are just so well produced. The music. The cinematography, the camera work, every all the interviews, the in-depth interviews. They're talking to you know Kellen Moore. They're getting talking to the goats like Antonio Gates and stuff like and, that. And text messages from Philip Rivers. Text. I didn't know he oh. texted. <laughs> this is a breaking news. It's, it's a flip oh. phone. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a flip phone. Uh, jitterbugs with the big buttons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice um, preset text that you can send. <laughs> so uh, definitely go check it out. All in, they're just killing it as per usual but the big news folks the one that again kyle called it pointed his bat to right field (laughs) because he knew where the ball was going to go uh jc jackson folks has been traded back to where he came from uh (laughs) go home go back to your home back your bags and go home yeah is answer me so sources, the Patriots are trading for Chargers cornerback J.C. Jackson. A reunion, the compensation is a swap of late round picks back to where he started. So obviously this was never the plan. The plan was we saw how well he played in, in New England. We thought yeah. we could bring him here. 
and it has just been mishap after mishap. And yeah. considering how the most recent games have gone with him being inactive. And the last game he was active and the last didn't game he was see active, the field. Did not sniff the grass. You, so. you kind of like everyone that was surprised that this happened, it, it kind of you could kind of see it coming if you were looking. Right. One like the one of the other ones that not many people are talking about is the legal troubles. That's a big That's deal. A big That's deal, a, yeah. not a charger thing. Right. Yeah, now he's back that. in Massachusetts. He can take care yeah, of it. Yeah, it'll be easier to, to get his court date. It'll be a lot easier. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. you know, clearly there was something going on behind the scenes. As yeah. soon as he spoke out about I don't understand why I'm not playing to yeah. the media, yeah. that that was when I was like, All right, noted. This isn't gonna last much longer. I just, you know, yeah, when Kyle said it last week, I was like, Yeah, they'll probably keep him. I am glad. Most yeah. charger, most season that oh no, you hold on to it. Fans, you yeah. hold on to that until right. it just deteriorates in your hand. You die with that terrible you, decision. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. You, there's you know there's so much pride in these some of these like acquisitions. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love that they were like, you know what, we're still trying to win it all this year. Yeah. Let's get him out of here. Yeah, let's make some changes. Let's free up some money because it does free up a lot of money. We're on a ton. You know, we we get screwed next year. Okay, but the two years after that, he's off the books. Right. You know what I mean? Guess so, who doesn't care about next year because two guys' jobs are on the line this year. Exactly. Tommy T and Brandon Staley know they got to win. Yeah. This is a this is a like oh no, we got to make a change. He's not the guy this year. I will say though, like I wonder if we ever got J.C. Jackson healthy. Like, did he ever play one game in a Charger uniform healthy? I don't. Ever think since so. last year or his first year coming into training clap, he had that elective surgery. Right. Like 10 days before the regular season. Right. And we're like, what in God's name? And then he blew out his knee and then he said he was healthy, but then he said he wasn't healthy. It's like, it feels a little bit like Bill Belichick had a little collusion here. He's like, hey, dude, <laughs> the, you put there. on your tinfoil uh, hat right game. away. <laughs> <laughs> look, yeah. look at how things like worked out. Charger team right now. I need you to go in there. You're going to yeah. take a bullet. Reach the out the other end pretty freaking red. Yeah. yeah. He's got yeah. like a self destruct right. little thing on his patella tendon and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that may have been outside of the script. That wasn't part of the script. Yeah. But, but hey, the elective, the, the elective surgery, like two weeks before the season, Bill Belichick made a call. The blowing out your patella tendon, <laughs> Bill Belichick's just like, oh, this is even better than I planned it. And then he comes back. He's healthy. He's not healthy. He gets, him, he's, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm doing. And then we just send him back for a, a six round pick. Feels like Bill Belichick had something to do with it. The Bill hey, Belichick phone was. We got ringing. a six. We got, hey, we, we got a little something out of it, though. We did. Uh, well, it's a $18 million for yeah, a for, pick swap, but for I'll people take people that are griping about the pick swap, like, that's not the point. That's the insignificant. Point is, yeah. We needed to offload this contract. We wrapped up $82 million into JC Jackson. We're on the hook for 40 of it, but the rest of it's going off to, to New England. And in fact, just the, the, Specific numbers here. Uh, the Patriots acquired JC Jackson, uh, 1.5 million guaranteed for 2023. Uh, in 2024, they this own 14.3. Yeah, and this is what they have to, they have to, right? Pay this is what Patriots are on the hook for 14.3 million next year, 14 million the year after that, 14.1 million after that. So all of that money now has been freed up for the Chargers to be able to put towards talent that can actually. I, I don't mean to be a dick about it, but Play. contribute because that's, actually that's, contribute. That's that was the whole point of wrapping all that money up. And for those saying that, like it was a terrible decision, it's like you don't know going into this. That we all Jason loved it. It's going to be an absolute decision was made. when yeah. we didn't know anything about him. It was like this guy's awesome. Bring him in, and yeah. then we got to see him play well, and, and lose a couple games for us. Seriously, lose a couple games for us. We're like, eh. Derwin was the all. Derwin was the one pulling for him. I got the Pro Bowl talking to him, trying right. to get things yeah. going, and. It yeah. was like, a, oh, if Derwin's on board, hell yeah, I'm on board. Let's go. Let's yeah. get this guy. Sure. And then when he signed, you're pumped. Obviously, it was a bad decision. That's very right. clear. There's right. no way to get all of these perfectly right. It's just going to happen. And there's sometime. no way to know that that was what was going to happen with JC Jackson. No, so, absolutely not. You know, don't, I, I just, I'm just saying that because like, I, I hate seeing when people going like, you know, oh, worst decision Tom Telesco's ever made, or, or I guess one of the better like ones, dude. Honestly, like get it off your books. Get well, just make the decision and go. The whole decision don't waste about, our time, like, especially for the Chargers not spending money on big time players. Like that was a big time player. That was a guy that yeah. had the most interceptions out of anybody. Right. Like if we got half of the production that he put up, we would have been the top intercepting team in the league. 
And so they put the money out there. They got him, and it was it just didn't work out. It was just a limit. Didn't work so, out. Um, so L, the Chargers, uh, they take a dead cap hit of eleven point five million in twenty twenty three and eighteen point nine in twenty twenty four. But after that, off hands the books. Are clean. Yep. So, so we save forty four million dollars. That is a decent amount. Uh, it's a good return policy. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll take and get that back because yeah. that's a lot of freaking money to be glad beat. that we did that, that we didn't just say it's 82 million fully guaranteed paying it up front or anything like yeah. that. Like any of those wacky contracts you see these days, we had an out and we thank God they had that. Yeah. Um, Eric Smith um, put out, according to pro football focus, Jackson played 49 snaps in coverage this season, 2023. Among players with that many coverage snaps, he ranked 99th of 112 cornerbacks with a 47.1 average grade. Thanks. You do not make that kind of money with that. I just, I just don't know if he's going to be the same player he was before the injury. Like he wasn't well, this bad. Patriots seem to think. Hey, show. so I think it's going to shine a lot of light on Coach Staley. What happens once he goes back? Was it a victim of the scheme? Did we not put him in the right positions to succeed? Um, I, if he goes back and kills it in New England, I think that's a direct reflection on coaching. But if he goes back and continues to struggle, it's this guy got paid a, a bunch of money and now he doesn't have any focus and he doesn't care. And so I think, I think it'll, it'll give Staley haters or Staley supporters fuel. I think it's going to show a lot, which I don't know if coach Daly saw it that way when he made the decision. Um, I know he just wants to win football games now, but I think it will shed a little light on how he handles personnel and what, what happened with that whole fiasco. If he goes back and starts to kill it in new England. Right. That's a very good point. Yeah. Well, it, it's an only time will tell situation unless somebody's got a crystal ball out there that knows the future. But hey, guess what? We play him this year. So why don't we just go put our best wide receiver on him and burn the shit out of him like he let everyone burn us when he was with us. That will be interesting to see how that game turns out. They're going to pick on him for sure. Oh, if he's 100%. in the starting lineup, you know they're picking on him because yeah. they know his tendencies. That Coach knows the playbook on JC Jackson and how to beat him now because right. he watched him get beat the, the whole time he's been with us. Wait for that game. That's going to be an interesting game. How, what kind of PFF grade he has after that one? Um, well, speaking of grades and speaking of ac- uh, accolations that we need to throw out, uh, the AFC every week puts out who their top players are, as well as the NFC. They all the whole of the NFL does. <laughs> um, and uh, this week, uh, the players of the week, uh, Josh Allen was the quarterback. Uh, for offense, but for defense was the guy who you cannot give course, to him. Just killed it yeah. this last week was uh, Khalil Mack, who ten. We sacks, all talked about the six sacks, six sacks, ten tackles, ten tackles, five for tackles for loss, two it, force fumbles. Yeah, it's just of, <laughs> some psychotic game, just out of control game. Second most sacks in a game since 1982, when wow. the the stat became an official stat. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. So congratulations, Clue Mac. Anybody that was worried about him not producing yet this season, guess what? He's now tied again for the first uh, for leading sacks in this league yeah. right now. Find so something was, else to complain about now. Exactly. <laughs> he had to, you know, he's sometimes, you know, it just takes a game to get caught up and then, yeah. and he's all for it. So uh, our buddy Dan W over at uh, Chargers Unleashed, my boy, uh, tweeted out Chargers defensive rankings through week four. Points per game, 27th. Uh, sacks, <laughs> first. Yay! Turnover, seventh. Yay! Uh, okay. third, conver- uh, third down conversion percentage, fifth. Yay! Uh, rushing yards per game, 13th. Yay! <laughs> rushing yeah. yards per attempt, 14th. Yeah! Yeah. yeah. Uh, passing okay. yards per game, uh, 30 seconds. Well, oh. JC is gone now, so we should be okay. This is we just got to improve this right here, right? That would be that yeah, would week be week one was a had. tough week one was a tough that's, start. To that, stat. that skews <laughs> the stats like crazy. So, yeah. the fact that we're in the all the other places looking good, this shows me that this defense can be still be good this year. So, we minimize the big plays, <laughs> you minimize the big plays. And the passing, there'll be less points per game. All the things that were the lowest in here, if you fix one of them, the other ones will come with it. Yeah. So I'm I'm still really excited about what this defense can be. How can you not be with Thule, 
you know, we get Joey back. You get all those guys really going. It's going to be freaking awesome. Big time. Yeah, getting Derwin and Alohi back will be will be big on that. And that too, yeah. Percentage as well. We were down a lot of guys last week, and we still we put up a good game. Yeah. yeah, thank God we had the bye week when we did, and uh, hopefully we can see come Monday night. I, that, that was the other thing I talked to Kevin about last night. I, I was like, we only got 13 games left, and that made him sad. But... Out of those what? 13 games. No, but it's not enough, Kyle. It really <laughs> isn't enough. enough. <laughs> I want a full year of football. <laughs> but out of those 13 weeks, or 13 games, rather, uh, almost half of those are going to be primetime games. Yeah, six of the 13 are primetime. Six primetime games. We haven't had a primetime Whoa. game yet. So yeah, we're yeah. two and two with six primetime games coming up. So yeah. Primetime Herbo coming in hot this week. And, uh, Folks, you can be coming in hot over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash charger chat. Check out all the funny videos we got over there. We've also got some informative videos as well. Those of you that have enjoyed uh, Coach's Corner in the past, sitting over at Patreon now. If you want to go check it out, patreon.com slash charger chat. And if you don't want to go over there, that's totally fine. You can go on over to our regular website, chargerchat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there, t-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other charger chat tiers in the member section and ask questions. And ask Bolt Fam, so go check out chargerchat.com. If you ever thought, why the heck is my wireless bill so dang high, then let me tell you about Mint Mobile, who we're partnering with for today's episode. You might already know Mint Mobile if you've seen those funny ads from Ryan Reynolds, who's also an owner, but let me quickly tell you about how awesome their service is. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out all the retail stores and the salespeople and things like that. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? It's a good question. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code if you're interested in the best value in wireless. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning-fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. Mint also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. Now, I've used Mint Mobile, and I gotta say, everything that they've talked about as far as switching over being extremely easy is 100% true. It was a super easy process, and then once I was switched over, I honestly didn't notice a difference in my performance. You know, all the apps that I typically used, like uh, Twitter and YouTube and things like that, ran exactly the same as they normally did on my previous carrier. Like I said, switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their digital eSIM cards, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your own home. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, that's totally fine. Mint Mobile will ship you a new SIM card for free. It only takes about 15 minutes to switch, and Mint Mobile has great customer service if you need help. And right now, as a special limited time offer, you can get their unlimited plan which is normally $30 a month for just $15 a month. That's a 50% savings off their already super low price. It only takes 15 minutes to pay as low as $15 a month for your phone plan. It really is that simple. Use our link mintmobile.com slash chargerchat to get started or click the link down in the description or scan our QR code. It really helps out the channel. And if you've already made the switch to Mint Mobile, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear about your experience with them. Thank you, Mint Mobile, for being our partner for this episode. Now back to the show. All right, folks. Time to go on to the next segment. I'm excited for this one because I know he's going to be talking about that last game. You know him. You love him. It's the Craig experience. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on in, man. Kick your feet up. Oh, great experience. Hello there. Make yourself at home. You got some stuff to talk about, right? Moving on. Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Get up. It's perfect time. Oh, hey guys. Nothing, just checking out one of my favorite childhood movies, Cool Runnings. I love that line, man. I don't know why I just resonates with me sticks sticks to your ribs something about it but anyway <clears throat> as you can see i'm home uh been back for days now of course haven't been in la since the game so clearly but yeah uh got to enjoy a chargers win in person shout out to the guys my cc bros big salute for that and uh the alley-oop on the tickets they were thoroughly enjoyed 
And of course, we had to deal with the nail biter because it's the charge away. It's what they know how to do. I really would have been okay with the blowout. Would have enjoyed that just as much, honestly. But I had to have my heart palpitations in person live this week. So right on par. Anyway, CC gang, once again, the biggest of salutes into the rest of the boat fam. What's going on? She got Craig back in Texas with another edition of the Craig. Whew. Experience. Yeah, I know, man. Poor Raiders fans. You guys made it a game. Got really, really close to uh, tying it up there. And, but ah, uh, well, I guess your boys are just far too remedial to come up in the clutch and make it happen when it's necessary. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> y'all know what it is, man. FTR, I had to get one for the road. Uh, but anyway, moving right along, because the Chargers are entering a bye week, which they need, as well as the fandom. I mean, let's be honest. We've gone four weeks with high blood pressure. And I'm going to say this. Take this opportunity to, if you need to re-up on your heart meds, take care of it. So uh, you're back and ready to roll when they take on the Cowboys. Because, man, this first month of the season has been a ride. And it feels weird to say that, again, like it's already been a month of football. These weeks are flying by. Every week, a little bit more stressful than the last. But I digress. Um, I think... As a fan base, we need to look back on the first quarter, maybe ask a couple questions, or maybe let's discuss some questions that everyone has been asking pretty much universally, see what we come up with. And why not start with, I guess, the obvious, because when hasn't this man been questioned, uh, especially a lot lately, and the type of questions he's been receiving, uh, Mr. Brandon Staley. So the decision-making has been questioned practically since the day that he walked into the building after the first nap. Now, remember year one, he was all the rage in the NFL because he had the huevos to go for it on fourth down more often than not. And he was pretty successful. And then suddenly in year two, not nearly as aggressive. And it maybe came back to bite him in the butt a few times. But now we're in like this bizarro world place where the aggressiveness is back on fourth down. And they're not really converting to the clip that they had prior, but they're still somehow pulling out wins. It's like, all right, I'll give you half of what you're asking for, but the success rate is going to drop off, but you probably still win the game. I guess that's an even trade off, maybe. I don't know. Nothing about that makes sense. But anywho, um, outside of just that, the uh, personnel usage has definitely come into question whether it be the lack of quentin johnston on offense which is still kind of sort of mind-blowing especially now that mike williams is out there still doesn't really seem to be a great plan for him quite yet maybe they can utilize the buy to figure out a way to incorporate him i have my thoughts on how they can do that um part of that is using darius davis a little bit more in the vertical game not just tossing the ball down the field to him even though they haven't done a ton of that but using him as maybe sort of like a decoy to open up the middle of the field for mr johnston so that he can do what he does and run after catch get him the ball that way uh, but you got to manufacture some more touches for him I, you just have to he has to be more of a contributor and then there's the jc jackson saga which just ended randomly out of the blue <clears throat> on a wednesday straight up that caught me off guard man i was working and i got that alert and it was just kind of like huh i beg your darn we'll say what now back to new england which makes sense for them because they have been dealing with uh charges level rash of injuries in the secondary so why not go back and get the guy who made his hay for you and um someone who understands the system and produced i get that but unfortunately things just didn't work out for jc as a charger Man, this is it's just a weird situation in general. Everyone loved that signing. It just made sense. The Chargers were finally going to have a top five-ish corner to go out there and lock down other teams in number ones, which should allow the rest of their defense to perform maybe to the level we expected they would be under Brandon Staley. Uh, you, you, know, you had your Jalen Ramsey with the Rams, so that made sense. And he was essentially 
Well, he could be that for the Chargers. I guess that was the idea. But it wasn't meant to be, as JC never played one healthy regular season snap of Chargers football. Super unfortunate. And I know you can ask the question about whether or not he was utilized properly, and he had his thoughts about that as well. Personally, the way I feel is if you make an investment in someone to this degree, you're taking a risk regardless. It's kind of how it works, but it's just really some bad luck and also maybe some poor decision making. Um, him not having that initial foot surgery early enough didn't get things off on the right foot. Yeah, probably could have picked a different phrase there. But besides that, if you want to put that on him or the team, OK. But then for him to, you know, start trying to round into form and having essentially a freak injury on a routine play that he's made hundreds of thousands of times in his career, I'm sure. You can't really put that on anyone. It's just something that happens. And to see the guy put forth the effort that he did throughout the offseason to come back from what for most would be a season ending, sorry, career ending injury says a lot about his work, his work ethic. So I don't really understand why people are coming at him for that. Um, and then, of course, the benchings and then the personal off the field stuff, it all kind of gets crammed together. So people are choosing sides. Ultimately, I think both are at fault. But for the Chargers, you're paying them a butt ton of money. So there was pressure to get him on the field. Maybe he wasn't ready. And then he gets on the field. Probably not the best idea to roll him out there week one against Tyreek Hill. One-on-one -on -one with no safety help. But, uh, hey, just saying. Tyreek bakes everyone. So if you're going to throw out a J.C. Jackson, that's not 100%. Not sure what you really expected to come from that. Like I said, I'm going to say they're probably equal parts blame to go around. Unfortunately, he's no longer a part of the Chargers organization. So now you're looking at those core pieces once again, and they're going to have to step up through the remainder of the year. Um, Vato Mike Davis has not had a tremendous year thus far. Um, you got Asante Samuel Jr. out there making plays. So that's great. And at this point, you just got to hope that the guys can hold it together and stay healthy. And uh, if you got to bring in some reinforcements, do that because... This team is currently constructed, you're looking at to make a run. There are going to be some bigger names that probably won't be on the roster next year. So this iteration of the squad, you need to maximize to its fullest potential. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm kind of try to talk a little bit about the state of the roster. I mean, you got guys coming back like Eckler, Bosa, not sure what's going on with Corey Lindsley, but he has a heart situation. And honestly, his health is what's most important. So if he ends up being like a long term IR guy, then it is what it is. Just, you know, his his life and health are what, you know, th those take priority right now over football. He's a family man first. So hope he gets better. And you got Derwin coming back as well. The teams are going to need as many of these guys all hands on deck against the Dallas Cowboys because that's going to be quite the matchup. I hope the Niners beat them into a pulp and maybe they show up a little battered and bruised. And if the charges are not at 100 percent, it levels the playing field a bit. Just saying. Wouldn't be mad at that. Uh, but talking about some of these guys, Eckler. It's clear how important he is to this offense. The running game has not been the same since he's been out. I think it has a little bit to do with the fact that Chargers haven't put as much emphasis on the power downhill running game as they did in week one, which I don't get because Joshua Kelly now being the de facto RB1 is better suited for that. But they have him running a bunch of outside zone, which made no sense to me. And Isaiah Spiller is kind of the all around guy. You can run him in power and outside zone because he's the more natural runner, much better vision, better footwork. And he's a good receiver out of the backfield. You saw a little bit of that last week. He got a bit more burn against the Raiders, which I was happy to see. Still not enough for my liking, but whatever. Eckler, on the other hand, allows you to still do both. But what I think now the Chargers experienced in him being out the last few weeks is they might want to consider potentially bringing him back after this year because you clearly can't just plug and play anyone and get the type of production that he gives. And I'm not thinking that they were under the impression that they could, but the fact that he's been out and the running game's pretty much been in the tank ever since should probably tell you the dude's a little special maybe more than a little uh so 
maybe possibly revisit this at the end of the year. We'll see. Keep that in the back of your mind. Bosa coming back is great, of course. You know, you know, Tuli doing what Tuli's been doing the last few weeks has made him, I mean, his absence not stand out as much. In no way, shape, or form am I saying this team is better without Joey Bosa. That's just not true. As a matter of fact, if you can get all three of those dudes, he, Tuli, and Mac on the field at the same time, in obvious passing situations, maybe line Joey up over guard next to Tuli and let them go to work that way, or just keep running those twist stunts in games, whether it be with Tuli and Joey or Tuli and Khalil. However, just somebody next to Tuli, havoc will ensue. We've seen that multiple uh, times, but Joey coming back is going to be uh, great. So looking forward to that. Corey Lindsley being out is a big deal. Uh, will Clapp, now as the starting center, it, he performed well against the Raiders, but you cannot ignore the fact that the pass rush was far more effective against our offensive line from a team who hasn't been that great really at all this year to this point as a uh, you know, in, in getting to the quarterback. But I think, I forget, was it? It's like 40%, 40 something percent of Herbert's dropbacks. He faced pressure, which is, you know, not great. Uh, I think it has something to do with uh, the protection calls, which is something that fell pretty much squarely on Lindsley's shoulders. Not sure if Claps that type of guy yet. And that means he's probably maybe splitting duties with Herbert, which means there's an extra level of responsibility on Herbert that he didn't necessarily have to shoulder with Corey snapping him the ball. <coughs> Pardon me. And I think maybe the offensive line was a little worse for it overall. So hopefully they can pull that together, build some more cohesion there because they're going to need it against that Dallas front because it is no joke. Cannot have a bad day against Michael Parsons. Par Michael Parsons and those boys. And then Derwin coming back. All good. Of course we want DJ3 back there. Trey BN, never want to not see him on the field. But you have to give props to um, guys like D. Marlowe and Raheem Lane that stepped up huge. Uh, they were able to keep the top on the defense, which is something that you can't say has happened in the weeks prior. Defense has been known to give up big plays, but not last week. And for those guys to come in cold off of the practice squad and perform the way that they did, makes you wonder why that's not happening with the starters so could be that the scheme was simplified a bit for them we've been down this road again <laughs> uh maybe that's something you should explore with your starters as well as opposed to saying oh these are my guys they should be able to do all this intricate complicated stuff and it essentially ends up backfiring just let the guys play to their strengths and maybe the outcomes are a bit different and you give up far less explosive plays. Just something to explore, um, hopefully. Uh, and, you know, just how the team can move forward and be more successful here in the second quarter, pretty much some of the things I mentioned. Potentially pare the defense down a bit, allow those guys to be playmakers, because I never think, and we should know by now, that the defense just isn't going to be a juggernaut in uh, stopping people. Maybe it's going to be about making plays. And uh, you've got guys that are capable of doing that on the defensive side of the ball. So give them the opportunity to do so. Um, teams may still score a tremendous amount of points on the charges. It could happen. But if they're able to make those timely plays to end games or at least put the ball back in the offense's hands and allow them to go close it out, then we can deal with that. Still going to make for some uh, rather scary games. But uh, at least you'll have a level of excitement that you can appreciate if it comes through to w's instead of l's but these close games are oh boy they're taking a lot out of me and i'm sure you guys as well um offensively i mean the Chargers are still one of the top offenses in the league um even though the running game's kind of fallen off a cliff the last couple of weeks but um i think with the improvement of that the efficiency will go up and they'll climb in uh the rankings as far as offense is concerned so sounds simple enough but hey, I'm not a coach. We just have to see how the Chargers implement these things and see where this takes us into these next four games. And then after that, we can come back and chat about what worked and what didn't and what they can do moving forward into the next quarter of the season. But that's enough of me rambling. Uh, again, fellas, 
appreciate the tickets. That was a fire alley-oop from you guys. Meant a lot. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. Uh, we got to get together again for another game soon, all of us. That means you too, Dub D. Don't you go getting sick next time around, or I will personally come and get you myself. I'll mask up and then, you know, I don't know. I'll take the risk. You got to be there, man. got to have the whole crew together. But y'all know what it is. Until the next one, it is Mr. Boat Gang, or Do Not Bang, a.k.a. T-O-P underscore F-L-Y-T-3 on Twitter. And also, you can catch me over as a co-host of the Lightning Round podcast. Come see us there as well. But uh, I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. Sorry. You know, pay me no mind. Uh, and, yeah, we get a little bit of time off. But I'll still be here next week. So, until then, catch you later. And, uh, okay, love you, bye. Well, Craig, I'm glad you had yourself an awesome time at that game. Uh, yes, it was a butt clincher for sure. <laughs> but hey, we walked out of it the other end. And uh, definitely, dude, like that's which that's end? My, uh, <laughs> You're talking about we, butt clinchers and other ends here, Adam. We were wiped clean, I think, of the uh, <laughs> at the end of that. <laughs> oh, but God. Uh, yeah, dude, I, I that's one of my biggest. I don't want to call it a regret because I didn't want to get anybody else sick, but not being able to see the game with you, Craig, is one of the biggest, like, man, I haven't got to see a game with Craig yet. But you've been our good luck charm for beating, like, the Chiefs, right? Yeah, you haven't been I've to been, a game where we've lost to the Chiefs. That's true. I so you, you weren't supposed to go to that one because <laughs> Adam, we lost. I know. So sorry. Pull your head out of your ass. Listen, I'll be taking my vitamin C for sure this time. <laughs> okay, but, uh, Craig... Thank you uh, for another uh, great experience because all of those guys that you're talking about coming back, like just that, that mention of like Joey Bosa, Khalil and Thule. Now, now that we see what Thule can do in those situations, like yeah, all three of those guys now are just going to wreak havoc on that defensive line and just mortalize yeah. <laughs> anybody that's uh, trying to throw the ball. So I'm extremely excited for that. Um, yeah, let's just get through this bye week, dude. I just like, I, there's football coming up in a couple of days and my team's not playing and I kind of, this is like the worst. That's I know fine. we need We're to get that out of the way early. Now. Yeah, I know we need to get healed up and everything, but I want for football. So I, I guess know. we can watch, yeah. you know, the Cowboys game. Let's watch, like he said, let's sure. hope they get absolutely destroyed by yeah. the the Niners. And, yeah. um, you know, there's things to look at. So let's get ready. Absolutely. So thank you, Craig, for another experience. Thanks, um, and I think that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat. Normally, we've got bolt predictions to make, but nothing. I, mean, I don't know. You yeah. got a bolt prediction for how bad the Raiders and Broncos are going to get beat this week? Yeah. Who do they play? At least, at least double digit losses. Think so? Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. 100%. Bolt prediction. <laughs> no, bolt prediction, double digit losses for, for both teams. Both teams. Please. And thank you. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> T's and P's. All right. That's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you, bye. Okay, love you, bye. Okay, love you, bye.